former manager of mine once said, you'll never get promoted until you do two things, perform exceptionally in the role that you have now and train your replacement. In lesson 10, we're focusing on the first of these requirements, which is performing well in your role. Whether your idea of career success defines growth as getting promoted, making more money, or expanding your business, your future growth starts with your present performance. Don't forget that. So in the last lecture, I introduced you to my grandfather, Jerry Butcher. He owned a business with his brothers and accomplished a lot of things. Do I consider my grandfather successful? Sure, he's my grandfather, I loved him. But let's take a look. By the time he got married in 1931, he was able to build his new wife a home. He paid each week on it as it was being built, and by the time it was done, he paid it off. He worked with his brothers to build a small family business that's still in business today. My grandfather retired in 1963, and his brother and his brother's sons took over. Today, Butcher Air Conditioning and Butcher Distribution are both still in business over 100 years later. My grandfather was recognized regularly for exceptional sales and got to go to conferences and vacations paid for by the companies like Philco. However, the personal accomplishment I'm most proud of is this. This picture was taken in 1956 when my grandfather was selected by Philco as one of their 56 ambassadors of goodwill. He and 55 other Philco salespeople from all over the country won an all expense paid trip around the world. They visited London, Paris, Rome, Beirut, Delhi, Hong Kong, Tokyo, and Honolulu. He got the big picture though. Because of the 56 men who were selected, he was the top salesman in the country. These are all measures of success that relate to the Adam One side of our nature. These are things that have, would have gone on his resume and things that helped him grow and prosper in his career. Previously explains why I feel that you can't teach ethics. However, that's not to say that you can't learn to be ethical. People learn to behave in ethical ways based on the rewards and punishments of their past behavior. But what about creativity? In lesson 10, we learn about ways to think creatively. But can you learn to be creative? That is a question. Or is it just something you either have or you don't? Creativity is using your imagination to continue to come up with ideas for new things. We normally associate this with artistic things, painting, writing music, maybe even decorating a room or inventing a new way to cook chicken. Who knows, right? Because of this, people who aren't naturally inclined to do these things will say they aren't creative. We talk about things like being left-brained and right-brained. People who are naturally creative, on the other hand, will say that they aren't good at analytical or logical things like balancing a checkbook. All of this overlooks the fact that creativity is not static. It's not like brown, ha brown hair where you either have it or you don't. Just like your ethics are shaped by your experiences, so is your creativity. In this scenario, we're talking about creativity as a way of leveraging brainstorming techniques to generate alternatives when solving a problem. To use the achievement methodology effectively, you have to be able to come up with lots of options. First, when you're defining the causes of your shortfall, and then again, when you're doing your SWOT analysis to evaluate your action plan lots of ideas, you can use one of the four techniques described in lesson 10. One of the challenges people run into, though, is that when they're trying to write their ideas down on paper, they do it like a list, writing down one idea after the other. The one problem that really stands out in this is that while you're thinking of ideas, you're also thinking about keeping your list in order, right? Unfortunately, this can interrupt your flow and lead to generating fewer ideas because you're cutting into creativity. So one way that you can get around this issue is using a technique called mind mapping. Simply put, it's a way of capturing your ideas on paper, but doing it in a more free flowing, holistic way. You start by writing down your central idea in the center of the piece of paper. In this case, 
if you were generating causes for the shortfall you're addressing, you'd write, you would write down the shortfall in the center of the page. Then using radiating lines, you write down each idea that you have addressing the shortfall, okay? If you think of something related to the idea, then you branch off of that. You keep spinning the paper and generating new and related ideas until you fill your page. In the end, you'll have something that looks like a sunburst or a spider web, maybe a snowflake, right? You can go low tech, which is something that I would do, and do this on paper, or you can get fancy, and there's literally hundreds of software tools like Ayoya, Microsoft Physio, Coggle, that allow you to mind map alone or collaborate with others on your team. The key practices, though, are always the same. You have to start with the central issue. Brainstorm ideas off this issue, related ideas off the central ideas, and then sub ideas off of those. Does that make sense? Draw lines to connect the related ideas, and once you brainstorm for a while, you can go back and clean it all up. One thing to remember is that you don't want to edit your list or do any cleaning while you're generating ideas. That's gonna cap back on your, on your creativity, so don't do that. That's why mind mapping is a good technique to use. Unlike when you're making a list, you're less likely to edit using this process. In the 1940s, a colorful state senator from Lafayette created and began to sell a patent medicine called Hatacol. In the days before the FDA had tight controls on medicines, there were tons of these kinds of elixirs and products being sold. They claimed to ease aches and pains, make you feel stronger, cure ailments, make you regular, you name it. Most of these products were just vitamin mixtures with a heavy dose of vitamin B and one common ingredient, alcohol. Hatacol was about 20 proof and it tasted awful. But in dry parishes in rural Louisiana at this time, it was one of the few ways that you could legally get a drink. Anyway, the state senator was named Dudley LeBlanc. After a few years, he was making millions selling this useless stuff. To take it to the next level, he came up with the idea of the Hatacol Caravan. It was a caravan of trucks that would roll into these little rural towns and basically put on a circus. There would be jugglers, musicians, and acrobats on the periphery. And then, in the main tent, would be a roster of A-list celebrities. Stars like Bob Hope, Milton Berle, Roy Acuff, Minnie Pearl, Cesar Romero, Lucille Ball, Carmen Miranda, and the Marx Brothers all performed in his shows. One story even says that Hank Williams wrote the song Jambalaya, riding on the Hattacall Caravan bus as he listened to LeBlanc speak Cajun French. Admission was simply two Hattacall box tops. In the late 1940s, Dudley LeBlanc came to my grandfather to help him come up with a way to promote his show. He wanted to be able to send someone ahead of the caravan that could make announcements. My grandfather described it as, you know, he wanted a town crier. Uh, anyway, as I said, my grandfather was a tinkerer. He could fix almost anything, and when it came to radio and electronics, he could create all kinds of stuff. His first ham radio was basically a bunch of parts that he cobbled together and, you know, fixed in his attic. Coming up with a loudspeaker system? Eh, not that hard. Keeping it moving? Well, that was kind of the trick. He ended up designing and building a loudspeaker system that was mounted on top of a car. So the car would come into town ahead of the medicine show, and announcer would give details while they drove around. Sound familiar? The Blues Brothers copied the idea in their 1980s movie. So to put this in terms of the achievement methodology, the objective was to design a system that would allow one person to move quickly through a town and distribute promotional flyers for the upcoming show. The shortfall, the difference between what he was doing and what he wanted to do, was speed and people. A team of people had to walk through town. It also lacked that oomph that made Dudley LeBlanc such a colorful character. Their solution was a car the promoters could drive and make announcements from as they passed out the flyers. It was loud, flashy, and a lot like the guy putting on the show. I spoke to my dad the other day, and he told me Dudley LeBlanc actually asked my grandfather to go on the road with him. Talk about a career decision. Had a call flamed out in the early 50s. 
So my grandfather, had he gone, may not have been in a position to go around the world in 1956. Students will state their career goal and include some reference to project management. Mind mapping, whether formal or informal, is a common practice in managing projects. Think of it this way. If a project was simple and straightforward, there would be no need for somebody to oversee it and manage it to make sure it got done. It could simply be run by overhead contributors like accounting, IT, or HR. Unfortunately, that's almost never the case, as you can imagine. Projects run into logistical issues, financial issues, people issues, you name it. Any kind of issue you want to think about. And it's a project manager's job to handle these curveballs as they come their way. To do that, project managers have to become masters at creative thinking and problem solving altogether. So if you're thinking you want to be a project manager one day, get really good at using operational processes like the achievement methodology and creative techniques like mind mapping. In this module, you're learning how to effectively solve problems and get things done. Here's some ideas for completing career to-do list activities in a way that can help you put this lesson to work. When you interview a professional or meet with your mentor online or via the phone, be sure to ask them about problem solving techniques that they've used or what kind of strategic and operation problems that they're facing at work and how are they solving them. As you update your LinkedIn profile, you can think about how you would highlight specific problems that you've solved in the past. What are the results of your work and how does it relate to your career goal? When researching professional certifications or licenses in your field, look for professional credentials that show you can address specific problems that are common to this targeted field. Sustaining good performance means you need to do more than just try hard all the time. You need to be systematic in your approach, and for the most of us, that means relying on some kind of process that gives structure to what we do. This ensures that we don't make mistakes like chasing ideas we simply think may have value and not vetting solutions with managers and other parties. By taking the time to really think a problem or situation through, we can identify better alternatives and move from simply managing our own activities to actually leading good performance.